The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. I'm Kelvin Hepner for Real Agriculture and pleased to be joined in uh, this canola field by Chris Mancher. Chris is uh, the new agronomy specialist for the Canola Council of Canada based here in uh, in eastern Manitoba. And Chris, uh, what a year to uh, to come on to the job. Of course, a challenging spring with excess moisture and, and late seeding in much of Manitoba and the eastern side of the prairies, eastern half of the prairies. Yeah, so the eastern prairies has been uh, beset by some really extreme moisture coming right from a lot of snow uh, throughout the winter to a whole bunch of Colorado low systems that have really kind of uh, thrown a spanner into uh, seeding plans because either your fields were completely underwater in the Red River Valley or you had such a high water table and high moisture that you couldn't get your regular seeding drills out into the fields. So crusting, compaction, uh, if you look closely in this field those are, are evident. Uh, this field fortunately looks obviously that it wasn't broadcast seeded but uh, there were a fair number of acres broadcast seeded by several different means in this part of the world as well. Yeah so instead of getting your uh, regular seeding drills out here uh, a lot of people are able to use either like a floater or a uh, tow behind Valmar to float your canola on or and we've even seen some instances of uh, aerial floating canola in those very wet spots. So uh, that brings off on a little bit more challenges. You know, you have to adjust your seeding rates uh, to reflect that you may have poorer emergence and uh, lower plant stands for that, uh, as well as um, being able to adjust your uh, fertilizer recommendation rates where you may need to apply a little bit more phosphorus uh, with that canola because it's not going to be seed placed or nearby. Mm -hmm. So that's in the past. What does this mean for the rest of the growing season in terms of optimizing what we have in the ground and, and whatever the conditions have that we've come through? What do we need to think about when it comes to decisions for the rest of the growing season? Yeah, so it's going to be really important to actually figure out what kind of plant stand you have here because that's going to dictate how you're going to be managing uh, the yield potential of your crop moving forward. So uh, thinking about all the different kinds of stressors and uh, challenges throughout the, the following growing season uh, or this current growing season, say uh, flea beetle pressure earlier on. If you have a lower plant stand, you're going to be wanting to be scouting much more frequently and applying insecticides when necessary once you reach those threshold limits. Uh, weeds are going to be more of an issue because they're going to be competitors to the canola plants they already have there. And then thinking on later into the season where uh, we may be encountering some diseases and your plant stand is also going to impact uh, those spraying decisions as well. Thin stand also impacts maturity. Yes, yeah, so if you have a thinner stand, that's going to cause your canola to actually branch out more to occupy this space. Canola is a very plastic crop, so it will fill in those gaps. However, because of that, you're going to have different staging with your flowering as well as come harvest time for maturity. So uh, that's going to impact your spraying decisions for that and also scouting for proper flowering times for fungicides as well as uh, harvesting for that because you are going to have pods on your central stem mature differently than say your uh, branching sides. Okay, that plant stand count, can you refresh us on that process and what we're aiming for there, what the ideal range is? Yeah, so the ideal range for a plant stand is five to eight plants per square foot. So if you're, when you're seeding, make sure that uh, you're setting your drills or uh, rates to that five to eight plants per square foot range. If you're a little bit lower, uh, say a three to four plants per square foot, you may be expecting about five bushels per acre lower yield potential compared to say five to six plants per square foot. But uh, you still have uh, high yield potential with those. Uh, maybe not as much as your target, but still very manageable. And there are tools available as well to help with some of those calculations determining what your your count is and, and what it could result in? Yeah, so the Canola Council of Canada is returning its Canola Counts uh, program, its tool that was used in 2021. So if you go to canolacounts.ca, you'll be able to take advantage of this calculator that will be able to determine uh, using your seeding rates and your plant stands, what kind of emergence you'll be expecting, as well as helping that uh, determine your decisions later on, as well as your following season, 
uh, for that field, whether you need to go and have a uh, higher seeding rate or lower seeding rate, depending on what you've been seeing this year. Uh, the advantage of the Canola Counts uh, tool is that uh, we'll take that information and all that data and be able to produce maps across the prairies on what kind of emergence and plant densities we're seeing. And so we can have a better idea of how to actually tailor uh, these specific regions for different seeding rates uh, for those years. That's fat could present some fascinating data then. Yeah, yeah, and, and uh, from last year we did get a bunch of data from that, and so it was great to see how we can um, adjust our seeding rates or our, um, our thought process for seeding for that. And the more data we have for people using the Canola Counts uh, website and that tool will definitely influence and help us make better choices in the future. All right. Thanks for your time, Chris. No problem.